Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, my session, which is starting now. Um, I shall be talking about uh, the uptake of Drupal 8 in agencies and some research I was recently carrying out. Uh, so if that's not what you're expecting to hear, maybe you're in the wrong room. Uh, if it is, bonza. So, uh, very quick agenda. I'll be doing a little brief uh, intro about myself um, and Cameron and Wilding, which is where I come from. Uh, and the background to the survey and what I was thinking about and why it might be interesting to yourselves. Um, the, uh, the results of the survey and then there's some time at the end as well for some Q&A. Um, also, this is just some lightweight research that I've done. Um, I suppose I could qu take a quick take here. How many is um, senior management or a agency owner? Great. So if you've got points that you want to raise during the session, feel free. Um, a bit more interactive would be good fun as well. Um, your take on the situation and what the marketplace is doing would be really good to share around too. Um, uh, so yeah, let's get started. So this is me, uh, Ben Wilding. Um, work in the UK marketplace in London specifically. Um, on the organising committee for London Drupal Camp. Um, we organise the Drupal Show and Tell and the Drupal Beer and Chat on a monthly basis in London. If you're ever around, give us a shout. We're always looking for good presenters. And been involved with the Drupal world since about 2006. And the company's been going since uh, late 2009. Um, and this is pretty much what we do and a little bit of uh, the team structure and some of the types of work that we do. Um, We've been yeah, dedicated to Drupal since 2009, and still today I would say probably 85, 90% of our work is Drupal orientated. Um, but as we'll see in some of the slides and the results that we've got from other agencies, we're thinking about some of the same things other agencies are thinking about. So why did I propose this session? Uh, I don't know what the other agency owners are thinking, but I've been pondering you know, what's going on with Drupal 8. Is it actually being used by other agencies? Um, what is that actual tangible uptake like? You know, lots of people have been tinkering, maybe doing some brochureware type stuff, um, internal projects, etc. But is anyone out there actually paying for Drupal 8 builds? And if so, what kind of size of those projects are they? What's the, the pace of that uptake like? Um, and that was my feelings. And you know, it can be uh, a lonely, difficult, interesting journey um, as a sole company director. And the Drupal world is a fantastic place because I know a lot of faces in the crowd now. We share a lot of information. We are very open. But I thought, let's get something a bit more tangible and uh, quantitative and share that around and see what people's thoughts are and give us a starting place to hopefully build and raise confidence that we're going in the right direction and things are going well. Our journey. Um, on Drupal 8 starts about three years or so ago. This is as a company, as Cameron and Wilding. We started um, sending team members to Symphony Live London. I don't know if anyone's been getting involved with uh, any of the Symphony conferences and training, etc. So we had team members three years ago um, preparing for Drupal 8, and we were starting to get into the mindsets. Uh, we were doing Drupal 7 builds using OOP programming to get our, our, our minds in, in tune, ready for, for Drupal 8 development. Um, and uh, yeah, it's been a long journey, I think, from all sorts of perspectives for everyone. From us as a company, preparing and getting ready and making sure our team and we were in the best position possible, through to obviously the development and coding of Drupal 8 uh, to the position we're at now. Um, so. That's, uh, that's the background to, to why I wanted to do this presentation and, and the survey. And I will be taking you through a loose journey of what are the companies that responded, how do they look in terms of size, shape, geographic regions, etc. Uh, moving into how are people selling it, what's the competition, what are the issues with selling Drupal 8 at the moment, um, into what's the practicalities of actually working with Drupal 8 a little bit. And then a comparison of uh, the size of projects that people are doing currently and the number of releases of Drupal 8 projects that people have already done. And this is just commercial projects I'm talking about, paid for by a client, by, by what I mean there. And then also what people are looking to release in terms of Drupal 8 projects in the coming six months. Um, so maybe we'll see an uptick there. Um, hopefully so. Oh, hello.
cool. So um, I did actively, one of my lessons learned on this presentation was it's extremely difficult to do a very good survey with well thought out questions that people can't mix up and uh, understand in different ways. And then also to get that data back through and then analyze in a useful and interesting format. So it's been an interesting journey. Um, I proactively tried to make sure the results weren't going to end up being too North American and uh, European centric. Um, I failed, but I did try. <laughs> um, uh, so I've shared the, um, the link as some of you, how many participants um, actually took part in this that are sat in the room today? Okay, so four, five, or maybe six. Yeah, so low numbers here. Um, so in total, now 44 people have taken part in it, uh, 44 organizations. At the point of doing these slides, it was 34. Um, but then I was at the Acquia Partner Days on Monday, and they kindly sent the link around, so we've got another 10 since then. Um, if anyone wants the information after this, then I'll happily share it with anyone that um, just passes me their email address, and you can get the raw data. Um, so, yes, it's very Europe-centric, possibly because that's where we're based, and I know a lot of company directors here. Uh, we do have a bit of a broader mix, and then we've got some of the larger organizations have taken part, with the 16.7% being global companies. The... Um, sizes and shapes of them. Uh, by far, the majority of companies out there that took part were in the 6 to 15 person size. Um, and uh, interesting that the 16 to 30, which is where my agency currently is, is the, the smallest number there. Um, and there's quite a big, big leap up to the 51 to 100 person agencies. Those are by far the, the two largest sets of, of company sizes. 77.8% were saying that it was 75 to 100% um, of their focus was around Drupal development um, and Drupal projects. Um, I think that's probably unsurprising as I'm directing it at digital uh, Drupal agencies, uh, but it's a, it's a nice high percentage. Looking at the mix of what people are doing otherwise, other than Drupal in those agencies, uh, Here's a, a representation of the vast majority of the, the technologies that cropped up when we were asking what other technologies people were using. Um, I think later on we've got the, got them, the top five or six in, in order of uh, the majority. I think Node.js was certainly standing out as uh, way up there. Um, and then Angular on the front end and some React uh, and a number of others. Um, Magento on the commerce side. <coughs> Ah, here we go. So yeah, Node.js. Um, this is roughly in order of uh, the number of responses we got around um, who was doing what. Um, so Node's the most popular and React's the least there. Um, WordPress and Node were probably the, the two at the very top as to the mix of uh, what Drupal agencies are doing in terms of work and delivery of tech projects. And looking at other services, um, so, as you've seen from the range of sizes, we've got some global organizations that are hundreds of people in size, uh, 1,000 plus, uh, all the way down to, you know, two or three people. Um, this is the kind of full service stack. There are probably about another 10 or 20 different offerings that were cropping up that, that people were doing within their agencies. But this, again, roughly in order of um, what people were, were uh, adding to as uh, value adds and additional services and products that they were selling. Um, within their agencies. Next up, I'll be talking about uh, contribution and what your agency did towards the um, towards Drupal 8. Uh, the last slide was about um, yeah what what contribution had been done. Um, I suppose the interesting takeaway one on there was um, right up to the last couple of days there was uh, zero um, for documentation, um, and as it's an issue that crops up later on in this. Uh, uh, this question mark about how Drupal 8's uptake is, taking, uh, is going, it's an interesting one for us as agencies to consider. And yes, there's various different types of contribution. I'm sure lots of people would prefer the coding and getting their hands dirty type. But uh, it was only in the last couple of days, I think four people or three people ended up saying that they'd done anything on documentation. So there, there's potentially work to be done there. or There's definitely work to be done there um, and something for us to keep an eye out. So um, who are we coming up against when we're, when we're pitching and when we're competing? Um, these four were the main ones. Um, I didn't have it on the original list because it didn't spring to mind as I'd created it, but EpiServer was the other major one. 
uh, which cropped up a lot in conversations at uh, the Acquia Partner Days on Monday, and I think is uh, worthy of note just simply because so many people sp spoke about it. But here we've got Sitecore, uh, Adobe Experience Manager, um, Umbraco, uh, and WordPress. Um, does this kind of reflect what people in the room are experienced? Like how many times do you come up against, who comes up against WordPress on a regular basis? And uh, Sitecore, Adobe Experience Manager, much less. Uh, that's funny because Adobe Experience Manager was the one that um, most people answered, I think 66%. And Braco, a few people. So yeah, WordPress a lot and Sitecore a fair bit. I think Sitecore for us is probably the main one that crops up on a regular basis, but um, that's bizarre. I'm sure the stats uh, was uh, Adobe was uh, out at front. So some of the challenges uh, when selling Drupal. So um, uh, this question we've broken down into a couple of different types of answer. So there's the Drupal issues when trying to sell Drupal uh, 8, and then there's the selling issues. Uh, and it's kind of divided up when we were looking at it. So uh, there's the module stuff. I know I'm kind of preaching to the choir here, but I was hoping to uh, um, hold up a mirror to the community and, you know, and the agencies and let us know what we need to be working on. Um, Devs not feeling confident, lack of um, commerce stability, um, low contrib availability. Uh, there's a nice quote from one of the uh, one of the comments from one of the people that um, answered. All in all, it's a pain in the ass to close deals with. Um, that's not exactly confidence inducing. Um, I did want to do this conversation and, and presentation to build up confidence, and I think hopefully I'll finish on a high note. But actually, the, uh, the results have ended up being somewhat neutral, which is an interesting place to be. So that's uh, on the Drupal side of things. And then on the actual sales process and, and selling issues, uh, these are the ones that are cropping up. Um, uh, again, this is all just people's opinions. Um, so you can agree or disagree with some of them. But hopefully, uh, some of them will res reflect your experiences and you're recognizing why they're up there. Um, Clients just want the thing made and could care less about the technology. I think that's often a, a key one for us that, you know, a lot of Drupal companies are still pitching and, and uh, talking a lot about Drupal. And uh, that's the thing we should talk about here, and that's why we're all here at DrupalCon. But it's not necessarily what potential or existing clients actually care about. They've got a problem and they want a solution for it. And if you happen to be really good at Drupal and Drupal's a good fit for that solving of that problem, that's where it's appropriate to, to use as a tool. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so we're getting into the section now where we're kind of looking at uh, what real world live commercial projects are out there that people have been building. Uh, again, these are all in order. So um, professional services, oh sorry, this is sectors uh, and industries. Um, so with live uh, commercial built um, paid for Drupal 8 projects that are live, these are the key sectors that have stood out the, uh, the most for most people. So professional services, um, tech, education, media, NGOs, um, B2C and e-commerce I wasn't quite sure about, but um, yeah, a lot of people tick that one. Um, so I think it's kind of reflective of the, the next slide where we're looking at uh, brochure where kind of simpler projects being number one. So these are the types of builds that are happening and already live as Drupal 8 projects. So um, brochureware, you know, content rich, content heavy, web portals, um, blogs, it all kind of reflects where Drupal 8 is and where you can be confident in terms of building, or at least up to this point in time, uh, in Drupal 8. Um, so the next one was uh, Drupal 8 builds up to this point, commercial ones that a client have paid for, and uh, Drupal 8 builds that will be released over the coming six months. Um, the interesting thing was that there is uh, overall a slight drop in the coming six months. Now, I'd kind of anticipated that there would be an uptick because for me personally, um, we are seeing more opportunities. We've got three good Drupal 8 builds, uh, three projects all kicking off now, um, interesting ones, good sizes, good budgets. Um, so it feels like you know we've hit the bottom of that trough of like trying to get there commercially with Drupal 8. There's a lot more confidence. There's still a long way to go in terms of modules, etc. Um, you know, media, um, commerce, etc. Um, but a big content-rich website with a fair bit of going on, some systems integration. You know, a chunky website. We're we're okay with that. 
Um, and we're very confident with Drupal 8 now, and we're ready to go. Uh, but that wasn't reflected in the data. So one interesting thing, though, was that um, the number of organizations that feel that they'll be releasing one or two Drupal 8 websites in the coming six months was something like double um, the number that have released and worked on commercial Drupal 8 websites already. And I think that's reflective of the number of people that are out there that are now finally taking that step into their first commercial Drupal 8 website builds. So in the room, who's already delivered a commercial Drupal 8 build? Woo. Yeah, that's worth a round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> and um, in the comings, like who's, who's currently working on, say, hold on. <laughs> Who's currently working on one or two projects in Drupal 8? And three to five? Five to ten? Okay, so that's where we're hitting a brick wall. So, yeah, and that's kind of reflective. There was... Wait, wait, how many shops ever work on yeah. ten deliveries at the same time? Yeah. In the... Sorry, okay. Yeah, I should have uh, extended it over a longer period of time. Oh, there's uh, Jana at the back who is. <laughs> Good man. 40 Drupal 8 projects on the go no, now? No, no, 40 concurrent projects. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, good, good. Um, so that was average budget size for your web builds versus the average budget size for your um, previous Drupal 8 builds and the coming six months ones. Again, the interesting thing there, which is reflective of, of the previous piece, was um, there's a slight drop in the coming six month releases that people have got in the pipeline now and already working on. Uh, but there is a, an uptick and an increase on the number of um, uh, smaller, I think 20 to 50K budgets. There was quite a substantial increase on uh, from the previous um, period, uh, you know, coming up to this point. Um, so I don't know if that again means that there's more companies that are just starting to actually win work in Drupal 8 and start to deliver projects in that. Um, the other thing which is, is harder to tell as well is perhaps there's fewer projects on the go right now, but the projects are bigger because confidence levels have increased, which means naturally there'll be fewer releases in the coming six months, but those projects might be more substantial, uh, which could actually, if you're the same as me, be better for agency owners because you've got the better planning and you've got greater visibility, and also is good for Drupal 8 because it's just an indicator of confidence levels being increased. Um, but it's kind of hard to tell. Um, it could and be. Sorry? There might be also that the current Drupal 8 code has been dragging, that you have been doing a lot of fixes and so forth, but the amount of code will be higher because it can't start getting code. Can you repeat the. Uh, what do you say? Um, it's probably not worth it now. Isn't it? I'll, I'll just email them around afterwards so everyone's got over here anyway. I'm getting good at just winging them now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jana, what were you saying? Yeah, that the. Yeah, that could be true too. Yeah. Can you repeat what he said for the recording? Sure, yeah. So the number of um, Drupal 8 projects on the go currently might have slightly longer tails because there's issues with where Drupal 8 currently is um, and you're waiting for a module or you need to do some fixes, etc. Um, so that might be a reason why um, there's a higher number of projects um, on the go or reported uh, to date now than in the coming six months. Um, so... Yeah, ask the question, what actual issues and gotchas have you got So, uh, in delivering these projects? Um, there's quite a few bits of feedback, so again, I'll happily share these around with everyone. I don't want to go through technical stuff with you all now. Um, but there's, there's, I don't know, we did our first couple of builds just over a year ago, our company website and the DrupalShowandTell.com website uh, for the event we run in London. And there were some weird quirks in there. So I thought this would be a handy one just to be able to share around the information for people. So if you're kicking off those projects now, you get a heads up. Um, like uh, we've worked with some colleagues in London that we know very well, such as Andy, who's uh, well into a, a substantial um, Drupal 8 project with um, a, a large charity over there. And we've picked his brains about any kind of weird little quirks, etc. And I think the more we share those around, the easier the project delivery is going to be and the happier our clients are going to be and the happier we're going to be. Um, so that's a helpful thing. So um, here, again, it's going to depend agency by agency how well people have prepped, you know, the, the, the team, um, the skill sets, etc. Someone's talking about um, the delivery time being up by 25%. 
um, and the, the complexity of it being somewhat of a surprise to them. You know, 25%, that's, that's far from insignificant. That's really uh, something for people to be aware of, how you're approaching the estimating and how you're approaching delivering a Drupal 8 website um, that's coming up for you. Um, yeah, modules, everyone's moaning about the pace of modules um, uh, being ported over. You know, that's for us to, to handle. Uh, this again roughly in order of uh, the feedback that we were receiving from people in terms of uh, the issues that were the holding them back or, or were surprises as they were delivering projects. Um, again I think a lot of this is to do with how you've prepared to, to be ready to deliver on these projects. Um, but I think it's only fair that people can, all of us as a community can get these heads up and, and see what these issues are. Again, there's um, you know, a good dozen or so more of these things, and some people have put in a good paragraph or two in, on detail of, of uh, issues that they faced. So again, happily share those around later. Um, have you considered moving away from Drupal? Um, not really something we'd considered, but I thought I'd chuck in a nice controversial question in there and get people's views and take on it. Um, anyone want to jump ship and give up now? Um, we've kind of come a bloody long way to do it, so um, I wouldn't. Um, but yeah, here's some of the thoughts. So um, out of 34 respondents on this question, so probably about half of the questions were required and half weren't. This wasn't required. Uh, so about 34 out of the 44 respondents um, just said an outright no, um, whereas some of the others were not necessarily saying yes, but they were watering down what they were doing. They were diversifying. They were moving into some other technologies. So not moving away from it at all. Um, uh, and some of this is perfectly sensible and fair. You know, it is overkill for a lot of projects. So uh, us as an agency, we've tinkered with the idea of, you know, not necessarily saying goodbye to some of the, the lower value projects, but maybe diving into a bit of WordPress. Or, um, you know, at the top end, the mid-range and enterprise stuff that we do, we're, we're perfectly content with Drupal, so we're not really looking at anything else. Um, but also, you know, we all have to be exploring the front end, for example, with Angular and uh, React, et cetera, and the options that we've got there. And we're finding on a lot of the bigger projects that we're now doing, I don't know about yourselves, Drupal is becoming a, a slightly smaller part of a, a bigger pie and the tech stack is, is shifting and changing. Um, so you just need to be conscious of that and, and aware of it and, uh, and planning ahead so it doesn't take you by surprise. Uh, so with that in mind, how does... Uh, what does Drupal need to do to stay relevant in the coming 24 months? Um, <coughs> the last one was uh, quite, I mean, the first one, sorry, community leadership was quite um, a standout one for me, uh, particularly because of uh, Dries's <coughs> keynote on Tuesday, which I thought um, hit the nail on the head. It's exactly what we needed to be hearing. Uh, I think the leadership there was, was fantastic, and he set us up well. You know, there are issues there. It has taken a long time. Uh, but, you know, we're progressing, and I don't know who was there for, for the keynote, but 8.2 um, to be released on, I think it was the 5th of October. Yeah, um, there's some really nice usability stuff there, um, and I think we do have issues around UX and usability that's uh, being worked on now, and that comes up later on. Um, and it's nice to see that and really progressive. You know, we need to be conscious of the end user a lot more. Um, as we've spoken about, and Dries talked about, it started off by developers, for developers, and that needs to, to, to change, and, uh, or we just need to be conscious of the different types of users we have these days. Um, <coughs> and that ties in greatly with the improved content editor experience. Uh, the challenge, again, around modules and contrib being ported over, uh, there's work to be done there, but we're all more than conscious of that. How do you think agency directors can help? So how many of you are, um, let's take the second one for example, um, pay for contributions, push cash into support. So it's a bit of a broad one there, but I don't know, how many of you contribute company time to uh, your teams doing contribution? Great, what's that, two thirds? That's awesome. Um, and um, on the marketing side of things, um, what's the activities that people are doing there? One person's example was, you know, case studies on D8 versus um, 
uh, WordPress. I know Jam, for example, did a lot of work last year on Drupal.com um, and earlier this year, um, which is a great tool for marketing Drupal, and it kind of pitches itself and looks very different to Drupal.org. Um, we've got case studies on there. We've also done case studies ourselves on Drupal.org too. Um, how many people are uh, following up and actually creating collateral around that and putting it back into the Drupal community, not just your company? So we are, so case studies on Drupal.org or Drupal.com or kind of more widely shared areas? <coughs> no? Okay. So that's something I know... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yes, I think it's one of those challenging things because you're getting towards the end of that project. You're thinking about your own marketing maybe, but you know you're going to get busy with the next, next project and how do you add that in. Um, I think that's very important because I've been to a lot of um, uh, Drupal Business Day summits at DrupalCons and uh, the CXO days and always one of the big topics is how do we market Drupal better. Um, we know the best stories about Drupal. We've solved the biggest problems for clients out there about Drupal. Um, and it might well be on our own company sites, or we might be pitching that ourselves. But actually, it can be extremely powerful and useful if you're kind of sharing that more broadly out with the Drupal community. Um, uh, and then people can leverage that message and you know, use that weighting and the brands that you've won and the problems that you've solved and let people and clients know that, that there are existing solutions out there and Drupal definitely can be applied in that scenario. <coughs> Here we go. Uh, how important will D8 be in the next 12 months to you? So um, this is my last slide. So uh, don't take the big message away just yet. Uh, Drupal 8, um, how important is it to you? I think it was about 75% said extremely important. Um, and uh, it was very low towards the lower end. There was one response where uh, an agency said that they're moving away from Drupal. Um, there wasn't any more detail on that as to what they were moving to or whether that was due to them shutting down or God knows what reasons it may be, but there was one. Uh, but overall, out of 44 responses, uh, the vast majority, um, over around 75%, were ex extremely focused on Drupal for the, for the coming period. Um, and that's great for all of us, uh, and uh, you know we need to we need to be backing that up and and supporting Drupal 8 by pitching it, selling it, and you know getting it used because uh, it's a great bit of kit. Um, give me one sec. I thought there was some more. Ah, ah, okay. So um, the other nice thing, uh, just before I get to this slide, um, there was a question around uh, confidence levels and growth of your agencies. And uh, from the responses there, I think there was maybe only one or two where they thought there'd be no growth. And the vast majority, somewhere around 50%, were looking at 25% growth in the next year. There are a couple of responses uh, talking about 100% growth in the coming year. So uh, the takeaway there really is that there is confidence out there. You know, this, this survey went mostly to fully focused Drupal agencies. And that's got to be a positive sign that everyone's looking at growth um, off the back of Drupal 8, essentially now, and, uh, and the offerings that they've got around that. So I think we can be confident, we should be confident, and uh, we really need to kind of support that drive forwards and, and each other, you know, the co-marketing stuff, how do we get more of that done, um, et cetera, and just looking for ways to get it out there. And that's why I popped this up, really. I know... Um, it, it ties in, hopefully, with what Dries was saying in his keynote. It's been a long, hard slog, um, but it's not necessarily about the destination. You know, perhaps you wouldn't have got to the uh, release candidates model that we've now got with Drupal 8 if we hadn't had such a uh, painful experience, you know, up to this point. Um, and that's, you know, already fantastic results from it with 8.2, you know. And our ability to talk about innovation now, I think we have to look at what we've got and where are the benefits there and how do we sell those in. You know, you won't be waiting four years, five years for Drupal 9. You know, the innovation will continually be happening. And that will be released twice a year, ongoing for as long as Drupal 8 is going uh, and into Drupal 9. Um, you know, there's huge opportunities there. And I think we need to look at the structure of how we're working now, how the Drupal community works, and how we can leverage that, really, uh, as benefits. You know, someone said on one of the responses that there's no unique selling points of Drupal to WordPress. I don't think that's true. You know, we have to find those, um, hone in on them, and then really be able to um, 
uh, pitch that and sell it and you know, get that message across well. And I think the other thing here with uh, Winston Churchill's quote, which I'd never heard before, if you can't read it from where you are, you will never reach your destination if you stop and throw stones at every dog that barks. So yes, there's problems out there, and you know I don't want to talk about contrib modules being ported over again. You know how do we dive in, get on with it, help port them over, get that done? You know there's no point in us moaning about it and chucking stones at it. Um, we just need to keep progressing. You know we have come a very long way, and we're just at the cusp now. I don't know what other people's confidence levels are and feelings are, but you know we've got some really awesome Drupal 8 projects being signed off and kicking off right now. I think in the coming six, nine months, we're going to see some amazing projects going live. And I think once we start to see more and more of those projects live, it's only going to get better and better. So, um, yeah. Best of luck with your Drupal 8 projects. And if you do want the uh, original data out of this, so you can actually look at the graphs and all the work that went into it, um, just uh, ping me an email or fill in... Fill in the survey, ask me for the link if you want. Um, I think the more data we get in there, the better. As I said, some of the results have been slightly tweaked since Monday because we got another 10 responses. And I really think the more input we get into it, the better. And then uh, I'll happily maybe wait for a week or two whilst people are inputting into it and then share it with anyone that wants it. But yeah, tweet me, email me or something and I'll, I'll get you the survey results. So thank you very much for listening. Um, it's maybe not a Q&A style presentation, but if you do have any questions for me, feel free. Or if anyone's got any comments about what I've been presenting on. Yeah, please do use the microphone so we get it recorded for the recording. <laughs> this, is, this is all fantastic. The, thanks very much. And uh, the, one of the things that was mentioned on the, 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 the presentation page on DrupalCon was that you might discuss typical project sizes, you know, project budget sizes for typical uh, Drupal 8 builds. Yeah. Did, uh, did, was that one of our missing slides, or, or is there, uh, is, uh, did, did that actually come out in your collation of the results? Yeah, it's in there. It's one of the, the graphs. Um, so the average range uh, was, I think the vast majority, and this was three different um, sections, was 75,000 US to uh, 500,000 US. And, uh, did, that, uh, uh, did those figures actually reflect the type of the project that was being done? Like, was it a social platform, or was it a corporate website, or was it an e-commerce site? Did you get that level of detail in your, uh, in your raw data or your uh, analysis? Sadly not. Um, that was a strategic decision because I knew the types of people I'd be asking to fill this in would want to click a few buttons and give me about two minutes of their day. Uh, but that would be good to see. Um, yeah. There's some more qualitative stuff in there, but not exactly on that topic. But um, you can see that the vast majority of builds that have been done have been, uh, you can see that by sector and, um, and type of build. So you can kind of take from that and second guess, you know, uh, what, what sort of sectors and builds those are to the budget ranges. Um, so hopefully that will help answer that a bit. It, it would be very curious to see the raw data. If we could if we see that in confidence, we could try to draw some conclusions that would help us answer that question for yeah, sure. uh, clients and help with the adoption here in Europe. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, no problem. So as a, a comment, um, you had mentioned that you were having trouble finding um, agencies to populate the survey. Um, a suggestion might be to go to the, the Drupal Marketplace page and just find all the, uh, by re and it, you can search by region, so you can get a list of companies by region and then generate sample sizes from there yep. um, um, in case you do a future s study. Yep, yeah, I mean, it might be an interesting thing to do as an annual piece and see how the market's growing, not just necessarily focused on Drupal 8, but... Um, yeah, thanks for the suggestion. It's a good idea. I, I mostly messaged all of the contacts I've known from the Drupal world for a while. I've approached the Drupal Association, and Megan helped out. Um, Jam help, helped a bit, and then Acquia on Monday uh, with the Acquia Partner Summit. Uh, so that's kind of the route that it's, it's gone out to. Um, yeah. Um, first comment is very well done. The <laughs> same Thank thing you. happened to me in my session yesterday, so I feel your pain. Mm -hmm. um, the question I had was around the sectors. There's no mention of government in that sector, sector list. I was just wondering if you had any data around government use. Yeah. Um, no. 
<laughs> That's helpful, isn't it? No, if it wasn't on there, oh, potentially, actually, because uh, that wasn't the full list of sectors. Uh, and I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, let's Hey. Oh, should have just come here. <laughs> there you go. Um, can you read a couple of those out? Can you make it a bit bigger? Any other requests, anyone? <laughs> Is that two sugars? Um, how can I? Oh. I'm not buying you a beer tonight, Andy. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's, there's a few sectors there. Let me quickly, I don't know how I'm doing for time. Anyone got the? OK, great. Plenty of time. Um, so let's see if we can get some of those graphs that weren't playing nice before. Um, oh, no, because we modeled them up ourselves. So no, we won't be able to show you particularly. But let's say. Um, Uh, here's the competition piece uh, in terms of other CMSs that people were, were coming up against in, in pitches and tendering. <coughs> As I said, uh, what was the one that was missing? Epi Server um, came up a lot on, on Monday um, as, a, as another uh, item, uh, another CMS that's, that's uh, often a challenge. <coughs> Tell you what, this is probably the most boring presentation you could watch. So uh, by all means, if you want any of this, just ask and I'll email it out to you. Um, and you can uh, crunch the data yourselves. Um, so this is the developed so far. Um, so three and five, uh, the biggest chunk, and one and two. So overall, it's, it's fairly low numbers. Um, and then I was just looking for the, the comparable um, that's budgets, and this is the next six months. So one to five drops slightly, and six to nine actually grows a, f a fairly significant amount, so, so that's a good thing. Um, but the, uh, the percentage of one and two actually increases, so there's more people out there, I feel like they're, they're dipping their toe in the water and trying it out and just you know, seeing what Drupal 8's actually like on live projects, which is good. We need to do more of that. Any other questions or queries or anything? Any people in the room happy to take part in the survey? Great, yep. Um, yeah, email me or I can grab a list uh, at the end. Um, so uh, yeah, that was it. Thank you all very much for, for coming. Hopefully it was useful. Um, <laughs>